while there are so many great resources to use to find new research papers, I want to show you the difference between using connected papers and using research rabbit. So connected papers is one I haven't made a lot of tutorials about on this channel, but it is one that uses a similar network analysis as research rabbit to analyze a paper. So in this case, I'm going to create one by just looking at a single paper in both of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is type in my keywords and I'm going to look for this review that I wrote and I want to see the connections within it. So one thing that I will say that is probably better with Research Rabbit is Connected Papers has now gone to paid pricing. So you can only get two free graphs a month and then you have to pay to get their higher, to be able to create more graphs. Research Rabbit up till this point is still completely free. You can create as many collections as you want. So that is one thing that I will say that is a little bit more, I would rather just go to Research Rabbit. But what you can see here is this is now showing a single graph showing all the different types of papers that are coming out of it. So you can see that there's a lot of things over here talking about calibration. And then you have some carbohydrate analysis by IMobility over here. Up here, you have more like steroids and steroid derivative analysis. And then over here, we're also looking at steroid analysis as well. So you can see that using this graph, you can easily separate out kind of the different themes coming from this paper that are connected to this paper. We can also look at individual ones on the left over here. One thing that I do like about connected papers over Research Rabbit is that whenever you hover over something, it actually goes ahead and updates the right hand side so that you can just see titles by hovering. On Research Rabbit, you actually have to click to be able to open that up. And that gets really frustrating over time if I'm just wanting to hover and kind of see the different themes that are going on. I don't want to have to keep clicking on everything. That is one thing I do like about connected papers over Research Rabbit. And then you can always click on the left hand side that will show you what you're looking at as well. And you can expand this if you want to look at this more and download any of these as well. And it will just download it as a bibliography. You don't get all the options to download it as like an Excel if you want to upload it into Notion or those other things. It is also showing you, if you didn't notice, it is showing you the year here. So you can see that those that are lighter were previous works, where those that are darker are more recent works. And you can also look at the derivative works as well. So these are going to be all the things that came after my paper was published. And then the prior works are going to be those that came before my paper was published as well. So if you were interested, you can actually create graphs off of any of these or add as origin. Now, those do mean that that does count as a new graph on your connected papers. So if you've already created two, you won't actually be able to do that. And then you can also save as well. So that's kind of the basics around connected papers. There are certain things that I like about it, but now let's see what does Research Rabbit show us when I just search this paper. So I'm going to come to Research Rabbit under my tutorials. I'm going to add in a new collection and I'm going to do my review. So I'm going to click here and the first thing I'm going to do is add papers in. And I can search just like I did on the on connected papers. I can search here. And so what I'm going to do is specifically look for this paper here and add to collection. So now just from that one paper, so just like in connected papers, we only have one paper here. What we can do is we can look at the references to this paper, the citations of this paper, and the similar work. So this is going to be similar to what connected papers do. So if I look at the references, it is going to bring up all those same references of these papers and it's going to categorize them as well. Now I can look over here to be able to see them just like I would look on the left hand side to see them in connected papers. The only thing that is kind of a bummer is to be able to see these individual ones. So if I wanted to do the same thing I just did, where I kind of looked at what the different themes were as I went around, I have to actually click to open up this side section here to be able to see it. 
So it would be really nice if I could just hover and it would actually change. Or even if that was a feature, I could kind of toggle on and off. So you can see that you have kind of information on steroids sections over here. Up here is more of your IM mobility basic information, your calibration information. This looks like the carbohydrates again. And then when we come over here, we start getting more of the actual papers that this review was on. So overall, I would say it created the network analysis really similarly. The other thing that Research Rabbit can also do is it has the timeline analysis. So you can actually see from this paper, these were all of them and this was the order they went in. So if you want to zoom in and be able to look at, you know, what were the themes happening at different times in the field, you can do that as well. Now we can also look at the citations. So connected papers included the references and the citations as a single graph. So if you're interested in that instead, you might want to go to connected papers. If you just want to see them as separate graphs, then you can come in here and use a uh, research rabbit instead. And you can kind of look around on what has been used to cite these different papers. And you can see one of mine has been used as a citation as well, but it, they seem more linked here, even though this one and this one have the same author, which is interesting the use of that. So that is all great. So this allows you to be able to see the references and the citations, but it goes one step further than connected papers and you can actually click similar work. So this is not just going to be those that were cited by or those that were referenced by, but instead it's gonna use more like keyword research to help you find what are the similar work being done in this field. And so you can also see that these are connected in different ways, either being cited by or referenced by other papers. So we can see that some that may not have been cited by this one, but are heavily related to it. So you can see these other Reister papers are connected closely, this paper as well that's referenced in it. So this actually has all of the papers that were actually part of the literature review are closer to the node or the review than all of the papers that were more the background information come out here. And so you get a little bit more of a separation and being able to see the different papers that you would need. The other thing that you can do is you can really easily create new collections from these. It doesn't, again, you can have as many collections as you want on Research Rabbit. So it's not leading to that pay limit. And you can add things onto this collection to actually create broader collections. So instead of adding a bunch of things in here, I'm just going to go to my IMS review that has a lot of different papers. And we can see when we go to similar work, we now have multiple papers that leads us to having multiple other different types of collections as well. This is a way that we can add in and kind of change our graphs to make it more and more what we want to see instead of specifically only coming from one paper. So overall, I would say that if you are interested in using these platforms, I would absolutely get a Research Rabbit account. It's completely free to get. You don't even need to have an institutional email address anymore. And if you want to be able to look at specific papers, then get a connected papers account and you can look at some of those specific papers as well. And you can check out this video here to get an entire tutorial on how to use Research Rabbit. I have multiple on my channel, and so there's a playlist here showing all of them. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe to this channel for more resources on how to become an efficient researcher. I hope to see you in the next video.